new student on a short summer course getting information from the college receptionist. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. Now the test will begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, as you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully to the first part of the conversation and answer questions one to five. Sorry to keep you waiting. <laughs> OK, here's the information you need. On the first page, there's some info about the college, the facilities, the courses on offer, etc. Uh -huh. Then, on these blue pages here, there's an outline of the social activities. You see there, OK? Yes. Now, this part of the booklet here, the yellow pages, that's the main program starting at 9am tomorrow. 9am, OK. So all the new students will be gathering in Herville Hall at nine o'clock. Uh, sorry, where? Herville Hall. I'll spell it for you. It's H-E-R-V-I-L-L -L, and then H-A-L-L -L for hall, of course. It's the big white building by the entrance. OK, I've seen it. Right. Anyway, you'll be in there for an hour. First, the Director of Studies will explain the various courses we offer and the requirements for them. Then for the second half hour, the social organiser will tell you more about the social programme and Saturday excursions. Is that all clear? Um, yes, I think so. Then where do I go after that? Ah, uh, yes, OK. After the talks in the hall, there's a break. And then at quarter to eleven, go to classroom four to have a placement test. Quarter to eleven. This placement test is to find my level in English? Exactly. Then, after the test, all the new students are invited to a special welcome lunch. In the cafeteria? No, no. Not for the welcome lunch. It's in a restaurant near the school. An Indian restaurant. Oh, OK. I don't think I've ever tried Indian food. Do you like spicy food? Yes, I do. Then you'll love Indian. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. So where's the Indian restaurant? Don't worry, it's really easy to find. Have you got that map I gave you? Uh, this one? Yes, that's it. See here, the main entrance to the school? Yes? Mm -hmm. Well, don't go out of there. Oh. There's a smaller entrance here, round the back. Oh yes, I see. OK, so you go out of there, past the phone box, and then turn right into this road here, the one that goes along the side of the park. Mm -hmm. You'll see a supermarket on the left, and then it's just after that on the right. Uh -huh. It's quite a big place. You can't miss it. OK. And one more thing. Is there a post office near here? Post office? Oh, yes, of course. Just the other side of the park. Go through the middle of the park, and it's there by the park entrance. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Oh, there's a good cafe near here, too. Very popular with the students. Just there. You go out of the main entrance into Varley Road, then turn left at the bank, and it's at the end of the street. They do amazing coffee. That's great. Thanks very much. No problem. Enjoy your course. Thanks again. Bye. That is the end of part one.
You now have half a minute to check your answers. Turns to part two. Part two. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to fifteen. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. The Airbus A380 is a revolution in aircraft technology. Today, I have as my guest Mr. James Carr, who worked on the project. Mr. Carr, when did you start working on the Airbus A380? I started working on the A380 project at the beginning of 2003, about a year after the first real construction began although work on the plane began in 2000. Can you tell us something about the plane? It is the biggest passenger jet in the world, with a capacity of 550 to 600 seats. It is over 24 metres high and has a wingspan of around 80 metres. It has 20 wheels and weighs 421 tonnes without passengers, and has a range of 14,800 kilometres. What exactly did your job involve? Were you working on the fuselage? No, I was working on the wing assembly at Broughton in North Wales. The fuselage and tail fins were made in Germany and Spain, and the final assembly took place in Toulouse, France. My job was to work on the computer-controlled wing panel assembly machines. These wing panels are not just sheets of metal, but have reinforcing stringers, which are long pieces of metal running along their length. The stringers are needed for strength. For the A380, Airbus invested heavily in automated machinery to fit these. The wing panel assembly machines cost around $12 million each, and there are now six of them. The machines required control programs to operate them, which told them where to go and what to do. I was responsible for the control programs. How many people were working on the wing assembly? It involved around 1,000 people, but this was a small percentage of the total, and they weren't all working at Broughton. Before the wing assembly took place, the wing had to be designed. This required massive amounts of research. The wing must be strong enough, but the weight must be kept to a minimum for safe takeoff and landing. The takeoff speeds for large aircraft can exceed 330 kilometres per hour. What was the factory at West Broughton like? Very big. The part I worked in was as high as a six- or seven-storey building. On some days, there were clouds inside the main building. There were other buildings, offices and departments inside the main buildings. Workers used bicycles, trucks and vans to get around inside. The building is the size of six-and-a-half football pitches. How did you test the wing? The wings went through several tests to confirm design and stress predictions. For the new aircraft, we tested one set of wings to destruction to find the strength. In other words, we completely destroyed the wing. We used another set of wings for fatigue testing. Fatigue testing is where we move the wings up and down repeatedly over a long period to check that they perform well and that no cracks appear. There were also test aircraft that pilots flew to check flying performance, fuel economy, loading and safety. How did you feel when the first plane was finished? The A380 is the most significant commercial aerospace project in over 30 years, and so it was good to be involved with something so important. On the 27th of April 2005, we watched as the A380 test aircraft flew for the first time, and there was a real sense of achievement. Did you have any problems during the construction? We didn't attempt a project of this size without expecting some problems. The whole thing was a problem-solving challenge from start to finish. Nothing was predictable. 
For example, while we were developing the programs, the robots nearly put holes in the wrong place, and we had to start again. All these problems cost the company millions of dollars along the way. How much did the whole project cost? I would guess it cost around eight point four billion pounds, or twelve point six billion euros. Thanks for talking to us, Mr. Carl. Not at all. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions sixteen to twenty. Now listen and answer questions sixteen to twenty. Welcome to Eurostar International Customer Relations. For English, please press one. Thanks. Your call will now be placed in a queue and answered as soon as an agent becomes available. Which journey would you like to make? London to Paris, return. And、um, what is your date of travel, please? The twenty-first of March, coming back on the sixth of April. What time of day would you like to travel? Around midday is best for me. There is one departing at twelve o nine from Waterloo Station. Pardon? Could you repeat that, please? Twelve o nine. Nine minutes past twelve. Yes. Nine minutes past twelve, gets to Paris at fifteen fifty nine. Right. I need to check the times of the trains coming back as well on the sixth of April. The latest I can get back to Waterloo is nine fifteen p.m. What's the last one I could catch to get back by nine fifteen? How about if you arrive at twenty one fifty three? Is that okay? I think that would be too late because the last bus is at nine thirty. Could you give me the one before that, please? Yes, I'll give you that. Nineteen nineteen from Paris arrives London at twenty fifty four. Sorry, what time was that from Paris? Nineteen nineteen. Um, nineteen minutes past seven. Sorry, I'm getting a bit mixed up. Could you run that by me again? Yes, of course. The train departs from Paris at nineteen nineteen, and it arrives in London at twenty fifty four. Got that. That would be fine. I'll need two tickets. Can we get a discount with our ISIC student cards? Yes, of course. If you are under twenty six, you can get a discount, making the price fifty nine pounds for the round trip. I'm afraid I didn't quite catch that. Could you say it again? Fifty-nine pounds for each return ticket, subject to availability. All right. Well, please, could you book those now? Yes. How would you like to pay? I'll pay with my Visa card. Could you give me the name on the card and the number, please? The name is M Kumada, K U M A D A. The number is four nine two nine eight nine three five seven three two one. Can I repeat that back to you? M Kumada, four nine two nine eight nine three five seven three two one. That's correct. And what's the expiry date on the card? It's o seven o seven. O seven o seven. Thank you. That's fine. Would you like the tickets to be sent by post, or will you pick them up at the check-in at Waterloo? We'll pick them up at the check-in. Please remember to bring proof of your age with you when you travel. Just one more thing, please. I am from Japan, and my friend is Chinese. Do we need visas to travel in Europe? I'm afraid I don't know. You'll need to contact the embassies of the countries you're going to. All of them? Oh dear. Thank you for your call. Goodbye. Goodbye. That is the end of part two.
You now have half a minute to check your answers. अगर लिसनिंग के साथ साथ आप स्पीकिंग की भी प्रैक्टिस करना चाहते हैं तो हमारी अपनी एप्लीकेशन है बेबी को डायल्स प्लीज डाउनलोड करो एप स्टोर और प्ले स्टोर दोनों पे अवेलेबल है और लिंक डिस्क्रिप्शन में भी हमने डाल दिया है यहाँ पे आप एआई टीचर को जितने चाहे उतनी बार स्पीकिंग टाइल्स दे सकते हो जब चाहे तब कोई रिस्ट्रिक्शन नहीं है और अगर आप चाहते हो कि टीचर आपको आपके बैंड स्टोर बताए आपकी मिस्टेक बताए और कैसे आप पांच बैंड से सात बैंड इम्प्रूव कर सकते हो तो प्लीज यूज करो मेरा प्रोमो कोड आयल्स फिफ्टी Do not forget my promo code is IELTS50. Now turns to part three. Part three. You are going to hear a lecture about the Miners Hotel. First, you have some time to look at questions twenty-one to twenty-four. Now listen carefully and answer questions twenty one to twenty four. Good evening and welcome to the Minor Hotel. We are pleased to have you as our guest. I will give you a brief information session to tell you everything you need to know to make this a pleasant stay. The Minor Hotel was built in the eighteen fifties during the Gold Rush period, also nicknaming our state the Golden State. People from all over the country and even from other countries came to seek their fortune here in these hills, creating cities overnight. In this city, many gold rush hotels soon opened up. This particular hotel was built in 1851, but was destroyed during an earthquake. It was rebuilt in 1995 to recreate the feel of the gold rush, complete with articles and actual photographs from during the 1850s. Our hotel is divided into two buildings, one called the Gold Tower, and the other is named the Fortune Tower. You will be staying in the Fortune Tower on the twenty-fifth floor, complete with great views of the city. Your room is the best room in the hotel, complete with private living room and hot tub. Here is your room card. On the card, it will say FT, meaning Fortune Tower. On the bottom of the card, it will say twenty-five fifteen. The twenty-five stands for the twenty-fifth floor, and the fifteen stands for the fifteenth room on that particular floor. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions twenty-five to thirty. Now listen and answer questions twenty-five to thirty. There are emergency exits in both towers of the hotel. They are located on the south side, opposite the elevators. Please use these in case of a fire or other emergency. We have some special events happening this week. Our Miners Diner is offering a special Miners Buffet dinner this Friday and Saturday for only twenty dollars per person. This special includes all food, not including drinks and alcohol, and shows for the night. The buffet will be available from five to midnight. Because of the historical significance of our hotel, there are some special rules. The first rule is that there is no smoking allowed anywhere in the building, not even in your own room. This is not only to ensure the safety and health of our guests, but also the furniture and pictures can be easily damaged by smoke and other harsh treatment. Please remember that there are items of furniture over a hundred years old here, so respect the rules by not smoking. Secondly, please do not take pictures using a flash of any of the drawings and paintings in the rooms or hallways, as they are old and fragile. 
We are doing our best to preserve a national treasure, so please help us in doing so. Lastly, you will only have one set of towels and bedsheets per three days. This is to conserve the water supply, as there are frequent droughts this high up in the hills. If there are any further questions, the staff of the hotel will be available to answer your questions. In the event that no one is able to answer your questions, I will also be available from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. each day in the concierge. I hope you enjoy your stay here with us. Thank you very much. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. For my projects, I chose to look at a subject which has interested me for a long time. Why is it that some people are much happier than others? More upbeat and optimistic. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. For my projects, I chose to look at a subject which has interested me for a long time. Why is it that some people are much happier than others? More upbeat and optimistic. I should say that I regard myself as a very happy person, and so are most of my family, as far as I know. <laughs> but that wasn't the reason why I chose this project. Some people think that nowadays we're becoming more depressed than we used to be, but I'm not convinced by that. And I came across some interesting research which tries to look at the subject from a positive point of view. It emerged from a movement called the science of well-being. And I decided I wanted to investigate it for my project because it involves several different types of factors. It can be viewed not just from the mental or physical side, but also from the social perspective. Now, in a large scale study of several thousand people of different ages, researchers found three main characteristics which appeared again and again in people who identified themselves as happy. The most significant factor was that you don't have to be someone who does something brilliant, uh, discovers penicillin or composes a symphony, for example. But happy people do seem to know what their strengths are. This enables them to make the best of themselves and not to dwell on what they're doing badly. Another striking finding was that happy people tend to be very curious, not about family gossip or things like that, but about larger issues, like current events. I remember one person the researchers interviewed had never learned to read, but he was happy because he kept up through TV news. And then, and this surprised me, people don't have to have lots of friends to be happy but they do have to be able to appreciate what they do have, the good fortune they've had, and how different their lives could have been if they hadn't been so fortunate. Turning now to what the research says should be avoided if people are going to stay happy. The three things that stand out are as follows. First of all, reflection time on your own is good but not if people use that time regretting mistakes and blaming themselves for everything. Another point is that people shouldn't worry about getting angry sometimes. It's part of what makes us human and it can be healthy. 
but they shouldn't always try to find fault with others. This leads to a great deal of negativity. And the final thing which should be avoided if a person is going to be happy is always trying to compete. Of course, it can be fun to try to beat another person in a game, but not if this becomes your only aim. It's much better to enjoy taking part in the game rather than being obsessive about winning it. Now, I've tried to do a lot of reading on the subject of well-being research, and I have to say it does have its critics. It's widely accepted that this positive approach does help us understand what happiness is and why some people are very unhappy. However, this has been dealt with many times before. The critics basically say that it's the old science under a new name, with only very small changes in approach. Well, that might be the case. It may bring us very little closer to finding out exactly how our brains work. But I think that sometimes even a very small change in perspective can bring real and long-lasting benefits. Above all, I feel that well-being research might help us to move away from simply prescribing drugs for depression. It helps us to explore alternative ways of dealing with unhappiness. I'd like to finish my short presentation by mentioning one of the people who was interviewed by the research team. Ada Clark is exactly 100 years old and still going strong, still giving piano recitals in her local town. She regards herself as a very happy person, and that this positive spirit has kept her healthy over her long life. But the reason I'm mentioning her now is because not one of the factors she says makes her happy is on the list I mentioned before. Every human life is unique. And we cannot guarantee what will make each one of us happy. That is the end of part four.